Lally ho and welcome! The release of Dawn Trail, the next expansion for Final Fantasy XIV, is getting very close. In the previous two videos I talked about the launch period of a new expansion and what you probably will have to expect based on previous releases. I want to reiterate that some of those experiences might not reflect what will happen this time around. There is a chance that it will be an ultra smooth launch and without any issues. And just in case, the previous videos will get you up to speed what to expect. If you have missed them, I will link them down below. For this video, let's go over the last few weeks since the previous one and look at the next couple of weeks following the updated shot we got during the 81st letter from the producer life. Also, I want to put the focus of this video on some quality of life changes that will come to the game with the release of Dawn Trail and that will be available to everyone, not just to people that are playing the new expansion. As with the previous videos, I will try to avoid spoilers for the main story of Dawn Trail. Since the last video, the media tour has concluded. Invited guests could test out the game and ask questions about the upcoming release. Now we have a lot of new and exciting info as well as some nice quality of life updates we can look forward to. I tried hard to get first-hand info and get a place in the EU media tour myself, but sadly Square Enix did not grant me entrance this time. I will do everything I can to get in the next time there is an opportunity. Mark my words. That being said, all the info I will present are therefore from third-party sources. These are simply a few nice quality of life updates that people saw in the demo build or got info about during the interviews. I will link to them in the description and encourage you to pay them a visit as well, but they won't be spoiler free. Also, I am adding this development footage info at the bottom, since all these changes were still in development and are subject to change. Some of that information was also demonstrated during the latest letter from the producer life. I want to start with the Japanese Famitsu magazine that found a new setting that allows you to hide players when you approach quest NPCs. I have talked about how to hide names of players in the previous videos, but this new feature will allow you to clearly see the NPCs and their animations. This feature is one that was also demonstrated during the letter from the producer life. It will basically come with three settings, off, small circle and big circle, for when you interact with the NPC in question. Frosty, aka World Race Guy, or Mock Talk Dude, discovered after getting defeated at a boss fight in a new Dawn Trail dungeon, that the shortcut at the start of the dungeon did bring him right back to the boss arena. Usually these shortcuts will only get you to the previous arena and you must walk all the way back to the next boss. This change will speed up progression through dungeons quite a lot. Whether this change was just for the media tour and if this change will be implemented into previous dungeons as well is subject to be seen. But I for one would welcome it. I mentioned the new slot for glasses in the previous video and wondered if we could use it for all kinds of accessories. We did get an answer during the interview with Yoshida, Meoni and Shenpai, as well as a demonstration during the letter from the producer life. The new slot will be for glasses specifically and only for the ones that currently exist as a fashion accessory, with more to be added. The glasses from the accessories will be reallocated as eyewear and they will be part of the gear set. Each pair of glasses will come with 12 predefined color options. During his interview with Yoshida, Preach could get the info out that chat bubbles are indeed in a sort of testing phase. This does not mean that they will be a part of the initial Dawn Trade release, though. But for all the people who would love to see chat bubbles pop up from player characters, you may not have to wait too much longer. There are more updates I could cover here, but they do contain spoilers if I were to show them to you. Like the new attack alert notification in the middle of the screen that people noticed. Also, some more updates will follow in the next section where I'll talk about the recent letter from the producer life. But feel free to leave a comment if you have seen something from another content creator that I missed and want me to cover it in the next video. I plan on doing a spoiler-free patch note video, as well as another video with helpful tips once the expansion is here and I could finally get some hands-on experience as well. As mentioned, next on the schedule we have the 82nd letter from the producer life. This one featured the launch trailer for Dawn Trail, 
a video containing in-game footage of the story to hype people up for what is to come. It does contain a lot of spoilers and therefore I will not talk about it in this video. If you want to see my reaction in the small analysis, I will link to the recent livestream I did about it up in the corner. We did also get some nice new info and quality of life feature reveals in this live letter, which I will quickly summarize here for you. Starting with bicolored gemstones. The maximum amount will be increased from 1000 to 1500. Also, by the way, attendees of the media tour noticed that Fates in the new areas did award more gemstones than in previous expansions. If you have to perform an emote during a certain quest, that emote will now also be visible in the duty list. And yes, like with items, you can simply click on that emote to perform it. No more typing or searching the emote list. We also did get a nice demonstration about the new 2 die system. You will surely be able to read more about it in the upcoming patch notes, but TLDR, new gear released with Dontrill, a small portion of previous gear, will now feature two die slots. You can now save your favorite color combination as a set, and it will also remember the last color set you have used. That way you can quickly color multiple pieces without having to pick the same two colors every time. All the gear will also get two die update. It will however take up to about patch 7.4 to get all the older gear into the system as well. Maybe sooner or later. We just have to be patient. There is also a small update to Fantasias. Upon using a Fantasia, you will be able to change your appearance as much as you like for 60 minutes of in-game playtime. So if you are not happy with how it looks in-game, you can change it again as many times as you like. Unknown is when that 60 minute countdown starts. It might either be when using the Fantasia, or once you have made the first change. I hope it's the latter, as there are quite a few people I know who used a Fantasia by accident, and whose characters are in the state where they could change it if they wanted to. Otherwise, all these Fantasias would be wasted. I hope the upcoming patch notes will give us an answer to this question. And finally, the companion app for the mobile phones will also get updates. They will add customization options and wallpapers. But the more important update will be, hunting, mining, botany and fishing retainer ventures can now be assigned via the app. This will require in-app currencies, couponats or mock coins. Unclear is how many and if it will also still use in-game ventures. More details will surely follow in the next patch notes, which will be very, very extensive. This brings me back to our schedule. The release of the patch notes is not marked on here, but it will likely be in the week of the 48 hour maintenance and the early access. About halfway through the 48 hour maintenance, you should be able to download the update for the game. Maybe earlier because this update will be huge. During the PLL, Yoshida mentioned that the update for Windows will be about 55GB in size. In total, with Dontrill included, Final Fantasy XIV will take up somewhat above 90GB of your drive space. We did not get an update size for all the other platforms. However, on PS5 the total amount of required space will be around 75GB and on PS4 around 80GB. Xbox users will sadly have to download the whole game again and that will be closer to a total of 100GB. No words on the size for the Mac version, but it will likely be in the same area. I'm sure, again, all the details will be available in the patch notes too. Once the game has released, these will be the next updates for the following month. Two weeks after the official launch of Dontrell, we will get the new 8-man raid series in normal difficulty. Another two weeks after that follows the savage mode for this raid, the new treasure dungeon, new tombstones and master recipes for crafted gear specifically for the savage raiders. By the way, if you still need a tank or a magic DPS, feel free to contact me. I will once again post everything I said in written form on my website ffxivhunt.com in the news section. As mentioned, I am planning on making more of this spoiler-free style of videos in the future. Although the definition of spoiler obviously varies from player to player, and I apologize if I did in fact spoil something accidentally. More videos will also come in the form of my playthrough through Dawn Trail. I might even stream some now and then. Best to know when I'm live or posted a new video is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, all my social media handles are in the description of my videos. And last but not least, a little plug. A new music video will soon be released by Husky by the Geek to celebrate the end of Endwalker. Better go over to his channel and subscribe to him too, so you won't miss it. 
and who knows who else might be in there. Okay, that's enough for today. The usual line, if you like this video, please click the like button. It doesn't do much since I am still far below the monetization eligibility, but I love to see the number go up nonetheless. I wish you a wonderful day, and until next time, take care.